Well, what has been a very chilly April and spring season overall so far for Spain? We we'll see a big change uh, over the Easter weekend where the temperature hit 33.1 Celsius in Malaga, at Malaga Airport to be exact. That was the warmest April day on record for uh, this particular south of Spain location and uh, very dramatic uh, changes coming uh, as well because we went from the record warmth of uh, of Easter Sunday uh, and we are going to see wind, rain, unseasonably cold temperatures and even mountain snow by the time we reach uh, tomorrow, Wednesday here. So thanks for clicking on to the uh, Tuesday edition of Bogan's European Outlook. These were the anomalies that we were talking about on Easter Sunday, uh, 10 to 15 Celsius above normal. Uh, very chilly, as you can see here through the bulk Balkan region here, very warm, uh, really up the western flank of, of uh, Europe, as you can see here, including the British Isles and indeed Scandinavia, where we've got uh, a big change coming, holding on to the warmth across the UK, but notice the big flip around within a 72 hour period across Iberia, as you can see here. And uh, you can see here that even yesterday the temperatures rose up into the high 20s, knocking the door of 30 degrees. But a uh, big, big change coming. So we go from uh, above normal heights, above normal temperatures, to a uh, fairly deep and unusually deep area of low pressure and troughiness over Iberia as we move into the day later today and into tomorrow. As you can see here, this is off the latest GFS run. We've got an area of low pressure bringing wind, rain and mountain snows to uh, much of Spain, as you can see here, during the course of uh, of um, of Wednesday, on the southern flank of that, actually, we're going to see some significant winds as well here between Spain and uh, Africa. Here, we could be talking about the uh, gale force winds quite easily uh, through this uh, narrow stretch of water separating the two continents here. So it's not just wind and rain and mountain snow, but we could also be talking about rough seas. Uh, in the southwestern corner of Iberia as well here. But the uh, Europe overall has been fairly chilly uh, during the month of, uh, of during the spring season overall. Have I got this chart to show you? And I don't think I do, unfortunately. Let's have a quick update, actually, because I've actually um, updated this article here. Let's see if we can do this real quick and see if I can show you the updated version of the article here because i do show a couple of things uh let's see here just bear with me just a wee second here folks so yeah this is the month of uh this is uh, the period between the first of march and the 13th of april and it has been very chilly central and southern portions of europe in particular as you can see here has been pretty cold now, if you look at, of course, the um, the front running five days here, so this is the next five day period, we've still got warmer than normal across the, the northern half of Europe, including the, uh, marginally the UK and Ireland average, possibly around Ireland. Look at the Iberia here. So while we've seen very, very cold conditions uh, during the month of March um, or much of March and the first half of April, while we've got this burst of summer at the moment here, it looks as if we're going to revert quickly back to chillier than normal conditions. And that looks as if that's going to be uh, holding uh, firm through the remainder of the month here. This is even uh, the 6 to 10 day period, which is the 23rd through, through the 28th of the month. And you can see here that while uh, much of the continent is warmer than normal, including the UK and Ireland, you can actually see still below normal temperatures across most of Spain and Portugal. Uh, so that is uh, quite, quite interesting, actually, when you really look at things overall here. So it looks as if it's going to be, uh, you know, March and April uh, together. It's going to be quite chilly across Iberia, despite the fact that we've just seen record-breaking warmth here. Uh, in terms of the British Isles here, these were the temperatures yesterday. So the temperatures are coming down quite a bit. Uh, across the British Isles compared to recent times. We we'll see, but uh, one thing I want to note uh, in particular is with low pressure to the west northwest of the British Isles, we're driving a kind of westerly wind in 
and that was keeping the western side of the British Isles quite chilly. But the warmest areas were down downwind, you know, to, to the lee of both the Grampians, the Cairngorms, and also down the eastern side of England uh, to the east of the Pennines here. What we're going to see uh, towards the latter half of this week is the reverse, because what we're going to see is high pressure developing over the northern half of the UK, you know, extending really from Greenland across to Scandinavia, big areas of low pressure running underneath that through Iberia, hence why we're seeing the unsettled weather, the chilly weather. But of course, with easterly winds, what we're going to see is chilly temperatures on the east side of the UK and warmest temperatures over the western and southwestern portion of the British Isles here. So really extending from Devon, Cornwall, Somerset, up through Wales, especially the western side of Wales, and up the western side of England and Scotland, we're going to see the warmest temperatures here. So we could see 16 to 18 degrees locally, low 20s possible, while on the east coast, uh, with, of course, water temperatures 68 Celsius, we could be seeing temperatures of only 8 to 10 Celsius at best in a few spots. So we're going to reverse the temperature profile we've got at the moment over the, uh, the British Isles with uh, the warmest end pushing towards the west side as we reverse the winds uh, aloft as well. So quite an interesting little flip around in the coming days here. And of course, we do see the, uh, the, the big change over Iberia from very warm summer-like weather to you know almost reverting back to, to kind of february uh, with this type of pattern here and all uh, a consequence of course of the stratospheric warming that was seen taking place of course back during the month of march here this is all uh, consequential effects of that uh, lingering as we go through the spring season i want to look in the next video at the prospects of la nina uh, almost kind of re-emerging or at least maintaining itself during the summer season, possibly even into the autumn season. That would be the, thir the third year in a row that we've got a La Nina. And it's been 1998 to 2001, the last time we've seen a three-year La Nina. So I'm going to try and touch on that in the next video here. So keep it right here in the channel as always. Thanks for watching. Do, of course, subscribe, share and like uh, the video as well. And I'll be back again hopefully tomorrow with more. Bye for now.